Are you getting overwhelmed with all the information there is out there about cast iron on the internet? There's way too much, I'm telling you. We're going to make it easy, and we're going to make it simple for you to pick out what skillet you need to fit your cooking needs and your budget. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the barn, and hey, y'all have seen us do a lot of cast iron reviews. And hey, I want you to be sure and check every one of them out. But folks, I've been getting a lot of questions. What's your favorite one? Which one do you use the most? Which one is your go-to skillet? And the point of this video is going to be to help you choose which skillet that you think would do you the best job in your kitchen or outside. The skillets that I'm going to demonstrate today, the ones that I use the most in our house, whether it be here or at the wagon, is the Field, the Stargazer, the Lodge, the Marquette, and the Fine X. And the categories that we're going to be discussing today are design, seasoning, weight, and price. Now, y'all have seen me use a lot of old cast iron, and still my favorite pieces are Wagner's and Griswold's. But also, folks, we need to talk about what's readily available that you can buy today new. And uh, that is what we've got here listed. Now, these are all companies that are made in America, and that's the number one thing that we stand for. So let's just jump right into design, okay? Right off the bat, and the first one is field. I'm just going to pick this field skillet up, and when I picked it up the very first time out of the box, the thing that I liked about it was it was similar to the design of old authentic cast iron. Folks, this is a pretty good lightweight skillet, sort of like the old stuff was made. But while we're talking about it here, you see this little deal right here? It is to help you like when the pan is really full or you want to dump something. Now, I would love to see this a little bit longer. I would because it's hard to get a cup towel on that if you got gravy in it and not get the cup towel in the gravy. Also, one thing that really is sort of, I don't think it would hurt you if you was just using it here, there, and yonder, but you can see on this handle as you zoom in here, if this was rounded off right here a little more to me, it would be a little more ergonomically friendly to your hand. It would. But one thing that is missing that I really love in a skillet, and I think it's got to have to be a true performing cast iron skillet, and that is a pour spout. All right, now moving on to our number two contestant here is the Stargazer. Now, folks, right off the bat, when I looked at this the very first time, I'm thinking, ooh, I love the design of this handle because look how far I can stand away from the heat. And this thing is rounded to where it really don't hurt your hands when you grab a hold of it. And it's got this V notch in here, which is going to keep it somewhat cooler than just a regular flat handle coming out there. But here, look here, a two handle deal. I really like this deal, I do. But one other thing that I really liked about it from the start when I first seen it was the depth that it had. I think this thing right here, whew, you could put a lot of gravy in there, folks, and that'd be some fine dining. And if y'all can see in here and you think, well, that don't look very well seasoned in here. Folks, we have done this on purpose because if you will stick around and keep watching our videos in the future on cast iron, I am going to show you a video on why is my cast iron flaking. But if we have to get back to something else too about this, there's no pour spouts here. I mean, it is a beveled edge. You can see where this is beveled coming off of here and you can pour out of it without it running down the side of your skillet all the time to where this is just a flat edge with just a little bit of bevel coming up here. Now moving on, I think we're gonna to go to the cast iron that is probably more readily known than any cast iron out there, and that is Lodge. Now Lodge has been in business in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee forever and ever. They have this handle that I really like, but because also, folks, it's good to hang a skillet if you got something on the wall like that. But look here, two pour spouts. But one thing I've always thought about Lodge, and some of their old stuff wasn't as bad this way, this corner is pretty sharp. Now, if I was going to use this every, every day, I know what would happen to it. I'd take a grinder to it, and I would. I would smooth it down a little. So, but if you look at this skillet and the Stargazer, the depth in these is about the same. Moving right along, we come to the Marquette. And y'all seen a review on this not too long ago. Now, when I first picked this up right out of the box, I'm thinking, feels like a Wagner or a Griswold into me, just the way it's sort of felt. It's got a light weight to it. And look here, right off the bat, two pour spouts. Now, I really do like that, I do. And you notice it is quite a bit shallower depth-wise than the Lodge and the Stargazer. 
But when you move it down here to the field, there's not that much difference. This handle too, notice the V in here too, but this one's gonna stay a little bit cooler. And I love the way that they've got this rounded off on both sides here. It fits your hand really well, it does. But I sure would like to see one more little handle right here on the inside of it. And finally, Finex. That sort of goes together, don't it, Shen? Finally, Finex. Now, folks, when I first seen this skillet, and they sent me some pictures of it before I ever got one of them, it was the design, and I'm thinking, mm-mm, I don't know about this thing. But when I got it, and I got to seeing it, folks, this thing to me is what I call the perfect thing to make cornbread in or pie in, but also it will do anything else at any of the rest of these skillets. But look at this handle. Right off the bat, I'm thinking, it's a little different. it is different, but it's gonna be cooler because it's got these coils and they're gonna release some of that heat before it gets back to your finger. Also, they do have a little handle on here. Going back over here to Lodge, look at the depth. They are the same as this is. And folks, that makes a difference all the time to me. It is a great piece of cast iron. To me, really, if you're sitting on the table full of something to eat and you wanna make a statement and you set this out there, that is a statement piece, it is. My overall pick for just best in design is I'm gonna to have to go with the Marquette just because of the way it feels in my hand and the way that I know it performs and the two poor spouts. But I think folks, we should have a pretty close runner up if not a tie on just classic design, what you think of when you think of cast iron skillet and that would be Lodge. But let's talk about handles because I think we need to rate some handles, I really do. Now, if we had to pick a winner on a handle that was most comfortable to your hand, it would be the Marquette. If I had to pick one that I think, hey, this is the best design for me to cook outside, but also in the house, it gives you some really good length on a handle that's gonna keep you away from the heat and it's gonna be cooler. Now, the next category we're gonna go into is seasoning and it's the one that people probably have the most trouble with but all of these skillets come pre-seasoned now you can order some of them unseasoned or what we call bare but folks we'll just start back down here at field this is a machine finished skillet which is very smooth on the bottom when i first got it it has a pre-finished coating to it and it accepted seasoning pretty well now we're pretty hard on skillets here it may be over tremendous amount of heat at the wagon or it may be in the house, but it's totally different heat than what you might see everyday use with in the kitchen. It holds seasoning, but if you're not careful, you'll lose some of that if you don't re-season every time, every time, every time. So let's talk about Stargazer. And remember me telling you that flaking is due to me. When this skillet come to me and I pulled it out of the box, it was a bronze color, really pretty, had a nice, slick, glossy finish to it already. It accepted seasoning fairly well in the beginning, it did. But you gotta be really careful, I think, when you're having a skillet that is that slick that you don't try to over-season all at one time and then you end up with some of this gumminess. So all in all, the skillet performed well and it seasoned well. So next we'll move to Lodge and we'll talk about seasoning, rough finish. This is their pre-seasoning that they put on, is when you season rough iron, eventually, over time, with more seasoning and more seasoning and more seasoning, you're gonna build up a slick, glossy finish. They say it's gonna help bond. Now, I like to take a little old piece of sandpaper, sand this till it's smooth, not down to bare, but just till it's smooth and then start. Now, of all the skillets here, the one that probably disappoints me the most in seasoning the way it comes to you or the way you buy it out of the store is Lodge with that rough finish on it. They've got this Lodge Logic and it is, is pre-seasoned and it is a little smoother than this to start out with. Next, we're gonna go to Marquette. This review not long ago, to me, this was the smoothest skillet coming to me of any one that I got out of the bunch. Now, this thing, when I first started seasoning, oh, it just took a hold. They seasoned with a light coat of flaxseed oil, which we don't like to use, but it bonded well. We went ahead and re-seasoned this thing many times, and it's got a good, slick, glossy finish to it. It'll season well, it'll keep well. Next is Finex. To me, when it came, it was smooth, but maybe not as smooth as the Marquette, nor 
the Stargazer. But something that it did do was it bonded seasoning really well first trip. But folks, it always takes seasoning back to it. It always holds it well and it always performs well. So my overall winner for seasoning is any mini mini mo is going to be the Marquette because to me it had the smoothest glossiest finish when I got it and accepted seasoning the easiest. Well, I think something that's really important about cast iron and uh, people need to know it and that is weight. You know, cast iron has notoriously been blamed for it's too heavy. You know, but folks, cast iron was built so many years ago for one reason uh, to cook with, but also heaviness is heat retention. I'm not saying that a lighter weight skillet ain't gonna provide you enough heat, but folks, cast iron was built that way for heat retention, and that's what it's performed as. So we have arranged these from lightest to heaviest. First, Marquette, Field, Lodge, Stargazer, and Finex. Well, when you go back over here to these two, I think they are probably more predominantly made closest to some of the old vintage cast iron. Now, when you get to the Lodge and the Stargazer, first of all, let's think, if the Stargazer's handle wasn't as long as it is, would it not, would it maybe change places and go over here? Well, folks, this skillet is made where it's a little more heavier, but sometimes I wanna show you this too. These skillets are pretty similar in weight, they are, but a shorter handle means it's heavier for you to pick up. You ain't got the leverage that you might have over here with this skillet. So that longer handle does help you out some on the weight that it's got. Well, we have rearranged again. We have, and folks, this is very important because it's that deal when you see it and you see that price tag that you either go, oh, or you go, oh, wait a minute. So we're gonna start off right here with Lodge and we're going from cheapest to highest. Stargazer, Field, Finex and Marquette. Now, remember I've always told you that cast iron is an investment. It's gonna outlast everything else you got. Each one of these skillets, if you take care of it, will last you a lifetime and you can pass down from generation to generation to generation. So really just consider your budget as to what you're wanting to spend. Now, I know the folks at Stargazer still give a military discount, but I do recommend also that you sign up for each and every one of them's email newsletter deal. They'll be giving you all kind of promos and discounts to where you can get this stuff maybe at cheaper rate than you could have just buying it off the shelf or at a store. Now, I do want to back up and go through with what I think stands out of uh, these skillets in each company. So let's talk about Lodge. And folks, accessibility is number one because you see it everywhere and it's in stock all the time. You ain't gonna have to wait. And they have so many different pieces of Lodge cast iron that you can buy, whether it's a skillet, a griddle, a Dutch oven, they have you covered on all of it. So folks, I think the thing that stands out to me about the Stargazer, sure, it's a, it's a great design, but also really is their customer relations that they build with people and their customer service. The good folks, uh, Peter and them over at Stargazer, they, they've always been there if we had a question, if we had anything, and we get so many emails from people say, oh, they were so nice to talk to, they were so nice to visit with. And folks, that makes a lot of difference when you get a product and you think, well, I need to call them and ask them about this or ask them about this. You can get a hold of these folks, they are there. Now, moving right along and getting on down the field, I think the thing that really impressed me the most about it was the weight, sure, but they had such a good machine finish on there to it, and folks, like I say, it may not be as accessible as what you can find some of these other pieces, especially Lodge. So be sure if you're wanting one to make sure that it's in stock. If you can't find it in a store, just go directly to their website. So getting on down here to find X, folks. And like I say, you want to make a statement? This is the piece. I mean, a great, different, unique design that I've never seen on a piece of cast iron. And the handle, I mean, it is the talking point of the kitchen but also the dining table because this thing is fancy enough to serve right out of it is. And finally, we get down to the Marquette. To me, the thing that really just stood out most of all to me was it's the closest resemblance to the old cast iron. I'm talking Griswolds and Wagners. To me, it was the closest design to it and had the finish that was just like they used to have on them. Well, I hope this helped you make up your mind what is the best skillet for you. Be sure and check out all our cast iron reviews. They're up there and they're easy to find. And if you need any help with cast iron, be sure and click on our cast iron playlist. 
As always, and it is with great honor, pride, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans that have kept that flag of flying back there. The rest of you, come on in here. Get in here. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to hit you with the iron. I'm going to give you a big old hug. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the cast iron trail.